um, possibly for Chinese New Year the, or her birthday in December, which is one of the big social events of the year in Singapore. Um, this is also a photograph of her birthday uh, in the 1950s, late 1950s. Um, you can see Mrs. Lee Chun Guan with the uh, silver hair with the back facing the, the camera. Uh, standing is uh, Tan Jing Lok. And next to him is Q Wong. And next to Mrs. Lee Chun Guan, the bearded man, is uh, Lin Bu Ting. Um, this is Mrs. Lee Chun Guan on her 100th birthday. Um, I think this, I'm showing this picture also because I think the chair and the, the hot lock seal, the Furu show at the back are, are in the museum. Um, yeah, I think she died shortly after this. Um, these are the what we call the yoktua of the medicine um, prescriptions. They, they usually come as loose pieces of cotton cloth, but in this example, belonging to my uh, father's nanny, whose name, she had no name, she was a slave girl, um, and she was just given a nickname, um, Nenek Salah. And uh, anyway, these are various kinds of uh, ointments and um, prescriptions for various ailments. And I may need uh, GT's help, but it says Obat Chapa. Which I, maybe someone can tell me what that is. Oh, GT? Do you know what Oba Champa is? Smallpox. Smallpox? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. And there's another one here saying Oba Mulot, which I suppose is for ulcers or something. Yeah. Huh? Another thing, obat tim itik, some medicine made of steam or like a steam duck, a cooked oil duck. Um, and these belong to Nenek Salat, who is the lady on the right. Um, and she was a slave girl, a concubine brought into, um, the, into my grand uncle's family. And um, she looked after my father and then my brother. Dick, who's the boy on the right, and he, um, yeah, and some of the jewelry he inherited from her is on display upstairs. Um, these are the, um, I was trying to find these Trita Dulu Kalas or the storybooks, but those that actually, I mean, um, who were still owned by the families of the translators, and I was very lucky to find it, Mr. Robert Chu, whose grandfather great-grandfather, Pang Tik Jun, who lived at uh, 41 Scots Road. Um, I think that's where the Shangton Towers is now. Um, anyway, he was apparently not, he was from Malacca, not from a wealthy family, but he made a lot of money in uh, property transactions, and he bought himself a huge villa, and I think as a hobby, translated these uh, novels. And uh, this is the family in uh, Scots Road. Um, then we have uh, books belonging to William Gui Tian Ho, and uh, they were originally um, written by Gui Pei Kui, whose son GT Lai is seated at the back here. Um, and uh, the, it is a record of all the Donang Sayans he, he wrote. Um, this is a picture, well, those that he composed himself and those that he heard. Um, that's him seated on the left, the Donang Sayan group, which I'm told is it's, it's a group, in, this is a performance in Malaysia, possibly Saramban, but uh, Chiti may correct me here. Um, I also, we also have um, documents that were written by Yap Pengge in the 1920s when he was a teacher at ACS. Um, I, I read some of them and I found that um, he, 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 
he was a very staunch Christian and I think um, inspired by his, his teacher, uh, Mr. Nagel, is it, or Professor Nagel, or Mr. Nagel, um, and who instilled in him and all these, uh, in, in very sort of, uh, all these Christian values. And all these short stories he wrote were mostly, uh, I think, European characters. They had, a, I think, maybe one or two of them had, were sort of based in, um, you know, like with Chinese characters. It was quite interesting. They're very, very colonial. Um, and they have a very, very moral theme about goodness and leading a good life. Then we have uh, these amazing recipe books belonging to Noreen Chan. They were written by her grandmother, Elsie Chia Dick Nyo. And um, interestingly, she, whenever she had something good, she recorded the recipe. So you see all these brackets. Uh, Sambal Grabo from Mrs. Chong Lek. Uh, Ayam Goreng Curry Powder from Ayin or something. So, um, again, you know, women's histories have been lost and, and um, Noreen has been very keen to mine information from these books. It's one of the few things that um, women write and have wrote and have left behind, you know, Panakan women. Um, this is uh, her grandmother who wrote the recipes um, with a beaded hand handbag that she created herself and which is also on show. Um, I, I find this motif really fascinating because um, they were also common on batiks and of course on embroidered Japanese screens. They were also popular in the Impressionist period and you know, Japonism and um, these orientalist sort of Japanese prints inspired uh, Van Gogh and Western artists and they started appearing in European magazines which again influenced batik makers who put them on batiks and maybe Chia Sekhnyo saw them on a batik and so you know it's these transference of ideas and motives going one big round from Asia to Europe and back again I think is fascinating. And on the other side of the bag is this uh, terrier, I suppose. I, I think, yeah, this, I'm not sure if you can see the other side of this, in this exhibition. Uh, and this is uh, Chia Sek Nyo as a young girl, as a married, young married woman in Malacca. Um, this, is, this object I love belongs to my grandmother. Um, and she was sort of a real staunch supporter of uh, sort of uh, the colonial government. In fact, she, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say she was very, she had a big misgivings about the Singapore independence. And, uh, and she loved this enough to leave it for my uncle. And, uh, but I, I always find that it's ironic. It was made possibly in the early 20th century, it was made in Japan. <laughs> then we have the um, the diary of um, Tan Jinki, who was the son of Tan Kyung Sek. Tan Jinki is the grandfather of Pito B, also seated at the back. Um, it's an interesting collection of. It's not really a diary. It's a uh, interesting articles he read, um, which he found interesting, and he just copied them all into a book. Um, and um, this is Tan Cheng Ki, who was the brother, the older brother, I think, of uh, Mrs. Lee Chun Huang. And um, again, you know, this is turn of the century, and how you know the Babas were more interested in being, you know, modern. Um, so I think this is an interesting thing to balance when we see. For example, the Panakan Museum, a lot of the emphasis is on sort of the spiritual, the spiritual core of the Pranakans, the wedding, the funerals. But, um, you know, when you think about it, how, you know, the wedding was 12 days of your life. And I think for the rest of the life, they were more interested in being modern. Um, I also wa wanted to show some con modern, th contemporary things to show the connection with the Pranakans today to with their past, so we also have um, scores 
Um, I want to, interesting effect when you put these contemporary things, they, they, they look like the antiques of the future. Um, but I mean, actually, this, this score to Beauty World is already more than 20 years old and it's faded and foxed. But um, yeah, anyway, these are the. I had various examples of attempts by Pranakans to, to um, articulate their culture today. Um, Desmond Sims sketchbooks. Um, and then we also have, uh, in, for documents, uh, Mrs. Leong Yi Su's cookbooks. But these are special because they, they were the books given to her daughter, to my dear.